Today, I'd like to talk about my paper titled Efficient and Effective Similarity Search for Bipartite Graphs. In what follows, I will first give some background on the problem, including the problem, definition, baseline solutions, and the challenges. After that, I will move on to present my our solution. Finally, I will show you some interesting experimental results. Um, similarity search in a bipartite graph is to find similar nodes of the same type. It finds many applications in real-world scenarios, including query write writing in search engines, product recommendation in online shopping websites, track target prediction, and online advertising. In the literature, it has been found that hidden personalized page rank achieves impressive performance in similarity search in bipartite graphs. Given a bipartite graph G with two disjoint node sets U and V, we can construct a graph G prime containing only nodes in node set U. Note that this cost can be up to the square of the size of the node set U. HPP is actually the personalized page rank on the constructed graph G prime. Specifically, given a source node U1 in G prime, we start a random work W from U1. At each step, the random work W either stops at the current node with probability up or jumps to a out neighbor of the current node randomly. The probability of the random work W ending at U3 is denoted by U1, U3, namely the HPP of node U3 with respect to node U1. Note that HPP pi u1 u3 only reflects the similarity between nodes u1 and u3 from the perspective of node u1, which is biased. A simple way to address this issue is to consider the bidirectional HPP, or say BHPP. That is, we represent the similarity between nodes u1 and u3 by the BHPP at u1 u3, which is a summation of HPP pi u1 u3 and pi u3 u1. Next, we let us define the problem referred to as epsilon approximate BHPP query. More precisely, given a bipartite graph G with two disjoint node sets U and V, a query node U in node set U, and an absolute error epsilon. Epsilon approximate BHPP query aims to return an approximate BHPP, satisfying at most epsilon, epsilon absolute error in it for each node in the node set U. In the following, I will introduce several basic techniques to address this problem and then analyze their limitations. First, a simple and direct way is to simulate Monte Carlo random walks from the given source node and then compute the fraction of random walks ending at each node in node set U as a corresponding HPP. Given a large amount of random walk samples, Monte Carlo retains the epsilon approximate BHPP for each node with respect to source node U. Another solution to, is to apply the power iteration, which prefers matrix vector multiplications iteratively, and obtain the approximate HPP values via a weighted sum. This method also returns an epsilon approximate HPP for each node in the node set U with respect to the source node U after many iterations of matrix vector multiplications. The third solution is the selective approach, different from the Monte Carlo and the power iteration approaches. It computes the epsilon approximate HPP of source node U with respect to every node in the node set U. In addition, given a source node U1, the random works probability of as 0.2 and a residual threshold epsilon as 0.09, it runs as follows. Initially, it sets the residual R at U1 to 1 and approximate HPP to 0. In the second step, it converts 20% of the residual into the approximate HPP value and pushes the remaining residual at U1 to its direct neighbor V1. Note V1 will convert the 0.8 residual from U1 into its own residual by dividing it by its degree. In the third step, V1 pushes all its residual to its neighbors U1, U2, U3, and U4 accordingly. This process repeats until all residuals at nodes in the node set U are less than the given residual threshold epsilon, namely 0.09. Based on the three techniques, we can immediately obtain two baseline solutions for epsilon approximate BHPP queries. That is, we can combine the Monte Carlo and the select 
select and push by inputting error thresholds in both to epsilon over two. The approximate BHPP can be computed by summing up the results returned by both methods. Similarly, we can combine the results by the power iterations and the selective push into the approximate BHPP. Although the previous mentioned two methods solve the problem, they incur expensive computational overheads in practice. The main reasons are that we need too many random works in the Monte Carlo approach and too many iterations of matrix vector multiplications in the power iteration method. As for the selective push, it's efficient in practice, except the cases where the error threshold epsilon is too small or input graph G has a high average degree. In particular, its time capacity is worse than that of the power, power iteration. Note that the E here uh, denotes the, the edge side. It's natural to investigate how to avoid the expensive costs in the Monte Carlo or power iteration and make selective push more robust while achieving the same time capacity to the power iteration. Next, we present our proposed solution of PROX BHPP. It relies on a key lemma that the pi u u i over d u i equals pi u i u over d u, where d u and d u i represent the degree of nodes u and u i respectively. This lemma suggests that if we can obtain HPP of source node u with respect to every node, we can obtain the HPP of every node with respect to the source node u. In other words, we do not need to invoke power iteration or Monte Carlo approach to compute the HPP of every node from the source node u from scratch. To ensure the accuracy guarantees for the final BHPP values and the meanwhile, the practical efficiency as well as the time capacity, we proposed an improved, improved selective push called selective and sequential push, and also introduced the power iteration based push. Given an error threshold epsilon b as input to the selective and the sequential push, we obtain the approximate HPP values and then transfer them accordingly before refining them in the power iteration push with the error threshold epsilon minus epsilon b. Approximate BHPP is to achieve a balanced trade-off between these two phases. To achieve this goal, we test the remaining residual at all nodes after the selective and the sequential push of various epsilon b on several real-world data sites. Note that a small residual sum implies power iteration-based push where can seem a small amount of cost. We found setting epsilon b at the right button can achieve a good performance in practical efficiency. Subsequently, we explained the details of selective push and sequential push and the power iteration-based push. First, we give an example to illustrate the drawbacks of the selective push. Recall that selective push only performs pushes at the nodes with residues greater than the error threshold epsilon b. Here we set epsilon b to 0.05. Thus, nodes u2, u4, and other nodes are not selected in this round of push. However, we notice that all these nodes will push their residues to node v1. After that, v1 will push the total residues back to these 99 neighbors. The residue at nodes u2 and u4 will be more than 0.05 and be selected at the next round. This means we need more rounds for pushes. An extreme case is that if we in each round only one node in U1 to U99 is selected to push. Since each, each round V1 will push all residue back to 99 neighbors, then we need 99 squared push operations from node V1. Instead, if we let, let them in a single round all nodes from U1 to U99 push residues to V1, then we can deplete more residues, but only 99 push operations from V1 are needed. This means selective pushes will cause more push operations in some cases. In addition, selective pushes assess nodes in a random order, leading to intensive man memory assess patterns. All these drawbacks in the selective push result in, result in poor performance in the cases when uh, epsilon B is small or nodes have high average degrees. To alleviate the drawbacks of, uh, of selective push, we propose to switch to preferred sequential push in some conditions. 
A sequential push is actually a selective push where the error threshold epsilon b is set to zero. More specifically, we prefer pushes from all nodes with positive residues until every node, node has a residue smaller than epsilon b, or the sum of all residues is less than epsilon b. The sequential push is invoked when the total selective push of operations affirmed exceeds the cost of using power iterations. This means we do not allow the total cost of the selective and sequential push exceeds the cost of the power iteration method. After obtaining pi b ui u for each node ui in node set u, we can use the lemma to convert it into a rough version of the pi f u ui. Next, we can refine the pi f u ui for each node ui in node set u with some selective pushes or power iterations. Similar to selective and sequential push, we instead we switch from selective push to power iterations when the cost of the former exceeds that of the latter. In particular, the algorithm, the algorithm will terminate if every register in selective push is less than a threshold. Like this, uh, dui over du times epsilon minus epsilon b over lambda. Lambda is a parameter uh, computed based on, uh, based on a power iteration, which can be uh, Computed in computed in a pre-processing step, uh, and also another termination condition is that t power iterations are conducted. Note that the parameter t is determined by the error threshold epsilon minus epsilon b and the registers at each node. These two termination conditions are to ensure the final BHPP values satisfy epsilon approximation. Due to the time limit, we omit the details here. Interested audience may can uh, refer to our paper for the for more details. Also, uh, how iteration based uh, method can ensure that its time capacity is, is, is not greater than the that of the power iterations. Then we experiment with two sets of data sets. The first set consists of three clicked graphs each of which contains a set of queries in U and a set of S or URIs, URLs in node set V. Each edge in then connects a query with an add or an or URL if uh, and only if the, the add or the URL was clicked at least once by a user who issued the query. The null set of data size contain, contains three uh, user item graphs in each data size node says u and v can then items and users respectively. And the C is the set of interactions between users and items. We compare our solution across the HPB against the two baselines introduced earlier mm -hmm. in terms of query efficiency. We set up to 0 0.15 and the failure probability in Monte Carlo to 10 to the power or minus 6 across the HPP consists consistently outperforms the two baselines often by an order of magnitude speed up. Next, we evaluated the effectiveness of the proposed BHPP similarity measure for bipartite graphs. In the original click graphs, we first randomly select 100 query nodes and calculate the top k order of similar nodes for each of them as the ground truth. After that, we randomly remove 20% edges and compute the similarity discounts into including BHPP, HPP, and other seven popular similarity measures for query nodes on the register graph. We rank the nodes according to the nine different similarity discounts for each query node and compared with the ground truth orderings. So evaluation metric is the normalized discounted cumulative gain, NDCG. The two tables report that BHPP consistently achieved best performance when k equals 5 or 10. On four user item graphs, we compare BHPP with other eight similar similarity measures in top k recommendation performance. First, we randomly select 100 query items and calculate the top k similar items for each query item on the original, original graphs. We then remove 20% edges and compute the nine similarity measures for each query item on the rest graph. We compare the top k recommendation list produced by the nine similarity measures with the ground truth top k recommendation list and evaluate the results using precision at k and the recall at k. 
we can see that BHPB still is the best performance on all data sites when k equals 5 or 10. Thanks. Thanks for uh, the presentation. Um, so we have the speaker Renchi here with us. Um, is there any question for the speaker from the audience? Uh, yes, I, I do have a question, actually two. Uh, so first of all, thank you. This is a very interesting paper. And so my first question is regarding uh, your motivation. So I guess maybe I have missed it, but you introduced like the uh, R method, the uh, push method. Um, so my question here is why um, do you want to combine these two methods? Are they uh, complementary to each other? Or do they have like advantages or disadvantages um, so that combining them can get better results? I just uh, didn't get that very well. So this is the first question. And the second question is, um, I think your method, um, you designed it for the bipartite graph. Uh, but I guess, um, so the question here is, can, can this method be generalized to maybe like a, like a general graph? Uh, because I guess um, power method and push methods, they also work on like personalized page rank on general graphs. So I just wonder if your method can be also generalized to like, a, you know, a general graph. Yeah, that's a question. Thank you. Thank you, question. Uh, for the first question, I see you, you mean, uh... Asking you question is why I combine the power iteration with the select push, right? That's right. Uh, the reason is that um, we designed a kind of um, similar measure called uh, BHBB, which is a summation of the personalized page rank from the source node uh, UI to U3. Uh, and the backward, uh, the reverse personalized page rank, like from the target nodes, uh, you uh, from the target node U three to uh, source node U one. So it's reverse. This it's a re uh, it's the summation of two reverse measures. For the first uh, one, we can use power iteration to compute it. We can compute the part F, we can see here. Okay. Part F means uh, the source node is U and the target node is UI. We can find a, we can derive a, uh, ensue a accuracy guarantee. But it uh, for the another one, we can use select push. That is the target node becomes the U and the, the source node becomes UI. Using the select selective push, we can ensure a accuracy guarantee. Our measure is the combination of both. So we use these two algorithms to compute both and then combine them to compute the EHPP value. For the second question, uh, the answer is yes, we can gener generalize, generalize this method to the general graph. But we can design this method for the bipartite graph because we uh, we find if we would need to uh, if we want to uh, compute the BHPP in the bipartite graph, we need to first construct a uh, n square uh, by by n square cost to construct a. a Graph G pi. This is costly. So we uh, and uh, for the bipartite graph case, it's more important to consider the uh, similarity from both perspective of uh, the target node and the source node. So th this algorithm is, is for the special case of the EHPP, but it's true. It it can be. Uh, it's generalized to answer the uh, personalized page rank query uh, of uh, general graphs. I think that answers your question. 